combining all LEGO games, there is a total of 157 Big Fig characters across, well, every single LEGO game. So let's take a look at the top 25. Cue the music. Actually, whoa, 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 let's make this one a tad bit epic. I'm Batman. Sort of foul beast. It's over now. So, hello, hello, hello there, guys. I am Rugged Eagle, and just before we begin, let's determine what a Big Fig is character is. Basically, it is a character that is a lot larger than an average LEGO game character and does not use the average LEGO model. So we won't be counting characters who can go giant such as Stay Puft Marshmallow or Homer Simpson or Ant-Man. And finally, oh yes, these are in a particular order, so number one on the list is what I believe to be the best. Number 25 has headed far over the Misty Mountains and that is the Cave Troll slash the Goblin King from LEGO Hobbit. Now you can't really do anything as these characters because they are that big all you really end up doing is running around middle earth swinging a club really lethargically the main reason why these characters are on the list is i believe the character modeling is absolutely superb to the likes of goblin's chin just wiggling i mean look at it oh it looks like boss nas has a little bit of competition and here is a look at all of the other troll models and for some reason they decided to drip out one of the trolls so he has a tuxedo i mean he does look pretty snazzy for number 24 come on grab your friends we'll go to very distant lands with jake the dog and well not finn the human because it's jake the dog in adventure time <laughs> now this character is unlike any of the other characters on this list as when jake is in his jake suit transformation other characters can actually enter inside of him i do love how it changes the face in the middle and i think it's amazing seeing finn inside the jake suit and alongside all the other characters you can actually place them inside of it too also it does go to double the selected player's health when another character jumps inside of the jake suit which i really like as it opens up lots of windows in co-op play if you go to enter the Jake's suit as the other player it also gives you back your health so say you're fighting whatever enemies are in lego dimensions i don't know flying monkeys or daleks you can get your health back Jake the dog is also one of the only few characters within lego dimensions who has the big character model and the other one is bane not to forget Jake the dog can also transform into all of these yeah. Bouncing its way into number 23 as well, the creature that looks like he ate Fred Dukes, and that is Fred Dukes, and that's the Blob. Did you just call me Blob? I am going to be honest, I did not expect to place Blob on the top 25 big characters, but... I just had to. The character is so hilarious to run around New York City in blobbing about, and he does have his own unique slam ability, which is really cool. He's like belly flubbers or something. That's that's the best way I can describe. Back in 2013, this character was just so hilarious to me when I was younger, and I mean, his chin just ain't as good as the Goblin King's chin, but it's nearly there. Now, in terms of his fighting animation, he does have the base big character fighting animation, because LEGO Marvel Super Heroes 1 was actually the first LEGO game to include include a big playable character. This obviously being the Hulk. And I'm gonna be honest, I totally forgot how broken the Hulk clap is in this game. Literally, I was on the other end of the street and it went that far. Now, I'm probably gonna make you angry, but I'm sorry, Hulk. It has to go to the blob on this one. And in terms of his slam attack, I'm really debated on what is hitting the ground first. Is it his belly or is it his, you know? I'll leave you to decide. It is now time to head over to a galaxy far, far away in LEGO Star Wars The Skywalker Saga with the Hulks. And that is at number 22. That is my best jabber impression. Now, the main reason why I have decided to place both of the Hulks here is because they both play the exact same. It's just depending on what appearance you prefer. You've got Mama the Hulk and Jabba the Hulk. Now, they both cost a whopping 500,000 studs to unlock, but they are worth it. Now, this is a very similar case to Blob in LEGO Marvel Super Heroes 1 because these characters are so hilarious to play in the sky Skywalker Saga, and I've got to be honest, they are really well designed. Look at this, I am a massive slug running around taking out the Empire, and I love the entire combo abilities these characters have. For example, when you want to send up enemies into an air combo, they lick them with their tongue and it sends them up into the air, and if you spam it, it's rather funny. Due to them being classified as a big character, they have a lot more health than the other characters within the game because they are classified as big characters, so basically Jabba has the exact same health as the Rancor. And oh yeah, if you did not know, Jabba the Hutt actually weighs 6,000 pounds so just imagine that slamming on top of you 
Oh, that's gonna hurt. That's about 1,300 kilograms. Then there is the sound effects the developers decided to give this character. It's kind of like a spring sound effect when he jumps. It's rather funny. I'll let you have a listen. If you would have told me £6,000 bouncing up and down sounds like that, I wouldn't really believe you, but hey, we're in a galaxy far, far away. Coming in at number 21, I want all of you to stop what you're doing and listen. Cannonball! Yeah, it's not that Anchorman, but it's the Anchorman from LEGO Incredibles. This character was specifically created for LEGO Incredibles, and no, he does not appear in the Incredibles movies, but he's a really cool character. Here's a rundown for you. He was basically a news anchor man, and then he got lost at sea and became evil and then returned to the city to try and take it over, hence why he's called, you know... Anchorman. Now, in terms of actually unlocking this character, you need to boss battle him within the open world, and it's a really fun, engaging boss for just an open world boss, and that's what I really love about LEGO Incredibles, and then you get the Anchorman. They really did spend the time on Anchorman, because I love his entire moveset, especially when he's attacking enemies. He kind of uses like a tidal wave to propel himself forward with the anchor in his hand to attack the enemies. Then there is his special move, where he literally causes a tsunami to flood out the entire area, and you just get so many studs from it. I mean, look at it. Beautiful. And I've got to admit, I really love the design of this character, and I actually think he's a really cool concept that TT Games have created, and he would actually suit Incredibles 3, maybe. He's a pretty cool character. And before we raise the anchor and move on to the next one, he also has a water laser ability, where he, like, propels water out of his hand, and it does look pretty cool, and finally, he can jump around the city, like most big characters can. Right then, now you can raise the anchor and it's time to sail over to number 20 on the list and well, he's a friend from work and that is Hulk Ragnarok. For me, this version of Hulk is a lot more better than the other versions of Hulk that came beforehand, because I really love how he's wielding two weapons, and it really does change the character entirely. Even to the likes of the transformation from Bruce Banner to the Hulk, I love how Bruce Banner pulls out the two weapons and he struggles to lift them, and then the minute he turns into Hulk, he just picks them up like they're nothing. When you are playing this particular version of Hulk, it really does feel rather smooth, just swinging the two weapons around, jumping about, doing the super jump ability, and I love how they changed up the clapping animation to where you smack your weapons together. By a small margin, this version just beat Red Hulk from LEGO Marvel Super Heroes 2 because he does have his own special ability where flames encapsulate him, but I've had to go with Hulk Ragnarok. <clears throat> to be honest, the main reason why he has beaten Red Hulk is he's got a special ability where he throws the enemy into the air and then hits them like they're a baseball. Brilliant. Climbing his way into number 19, hopefully this gorilla can make it up the Empire State Building in one piece, and that is Gorilla Man. Gorilla Man is actually the first DLC character on this list, and he is the main standout in the Agents of Atlas DLC. The character comes equipped with his own moveset, and he's got a move where he turns himself into like a bowling ball and just starts rolling around, and it is super powerful and super fun to do. And I do really love the appearance of this character, and you don't see many big characters in LEGO, games who can destroy golden objects because he does have his own laser gun but after watching the movie sing i can't get it out of my head he looks dead like johnny's dad just jumping around going that's my son that's all i think of i mean come on look at the comparison so the main reason why he is at number 19 is he is a really useful big character he can destroy silver objects with his grenades that he throws alongside golden objects with his laser and then look how solid he looks doing the walking animation oh my and only by a small margin, just taking the spot over Gorilla Man at number 18 is Bane from LEGO DC Super Villains. To begin with, he's got a really awesome transformation from Little Bane to Big Bane. Secondly, the man has a minigun. Now, I've been debating for quite some time. I don't know if this is a glitch in LEGO DC Supervillains, but when you aim down the sights as Bane with his minigun, the fire rate just goes ridiculously quick. For example, this is the regular fire rate of Bane's minigun, but when you aim down sights, it goes ridiculously quick, and I don't even know if half of the hits are registering because it's going that fast. And really, nobody cared who this character was until he put on the mask. Eh? And it really has been amazing watching the evolution of Bane throughout all of the LEGO Batman games. His first big character appearance was in LEGO Batman 3, and then we got him in LEGO Dimensions, and now he's in his true complete form in LEGO DC Supervillains, which I believe to be the best version of Bane. That is in terms of his abilities, I do still prefer LEGO Dimensions' appearance of Bane in his big character form. Hang on, hang on a minute, something ain't right right about this floor. Oh well, there goes Gary the Gamorrean. Next up at number 17 is 
The Rancor. The Rancor boss battle in LEGO Star Wars The Skywalker Saga is one of my all-time favourite boss battles in a LEGO game. It just looks so stunning and the character of the Rancor does not disappoint neither. And in some sort of case, he is the largest LEGO game character to exist in terms of the character not being able to transform to get any bigger. In all essence, you could really compare this to the Goblin King in LEGO Hobbit because the Rancor is that big, you can't really do much with the character and you only can really play him in certain in areas. So that does hinder his position on this list, bearing in mind he still is in the top 25 because I think the modelling is absolutely superb along with the sound effects when you're running around as the Rancor listening to the chains. And that is not the chain by Fleetwood Mac, even though that would be amazing. And for some reason, don't do what I did where you try and play the Geonosis Arena as the Rancor, it just really glitches out and it sends you flying across the map whenever one of the beasts attack you. And for number 16, we're going to need a bigger boat. It's King Shark from LEGO DC Super Villains. Now, as they say, never judge a book by its cover, and King Shark on the outside, he just looks like your average LEGO big character, but he's actually the only big character to have a musical ability. But, 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 just before we get onto that, I really love how King Shark looks, especially in the water when he's swimming around Gotham City. He does look really menacing, and he has his own fighting animations too, but the main highlight is this. <laughs> The music kind of makes me want to visit Krusty Krab. I don't know why. It is kind of criminal how this is the only big character with a musical ability in a LEGO game and he just has to make the list due to that and that's why he's at this position. Moving on into number 15 on the list, it's time to say goodbye to Asgard. Unfortunately, that is not the size of Surtur in the game, this is the size of it. Oh well, well, we'll have to make do. Surtur, for me, the main reason why he is this high on the list is I really love the modelling, especially the tail on the big character model, but there's just something so big pulling Surtur down, and that is the flames that encapsulate him. They just get in the way of your camera half the time. I mean, look at this, I, I can't see anything. Now, I really wish they went to give this character an ability where he can get even bigger, very similar to a character that will appear later on in the list. Mind you, if that was the case, you would not even see your character with the flames in the way, so there's no point. Now, 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 if this was purely based upon aesthetics, Surtur would most likely be in the top three, as I think he's got one of the best designs for a big character. It's just a shame with, you know the flames. This big character, however, can actually build stuff, which is very rare for a big character to be able to build LEGO objects because he can use magic to build alongside use magical abilities. So there is a massive plus side to Surtur, you don't have to change your character all the time to go back to a regular character model to build. May the best monster win next up at number 14 is Sully from LEGO Incredibles. Sully is one of the many Pixar characters within LEGO Incredibles, and that is one of the standout features of LEGO Incredibles, all of the amazing Pixar characters. I mean, you've got Ratatouille, Woody from Toy Story, Sully from Monsters, Inc., you've got the girl from Brave, otherwise known as Wee Merida, alongside Lightning McQueen. And then, <clears throat> Bing Bong. But today we're purely talking about Sully, and yes, Sully can do his monster roar, and it sounds amazing to be fair, have a listen. The colours in LEGO Incredibles are very vibrant and Sully fits in perfectly, I really love the blue contrast that he has against all of the red buildings in the game and the greenery, and Sully's so fun to play. To the likes of the little stars flying out of him when he attacks enemies, I really love their minute details and not to forget, yes you can roar in the enemy's face, which briefly stuns them, allowing you to attack them. And the character can super jump and I really like the super jump in LEGO Incredibles, it kind of feels different to other super jumps. Feels better. And yeah, he does have his own super move where he literally roars and it breaks the sound barrier and just destroys everything around it and you get loads of stunts. Anyway, Jarvis, drop my needle. Next up is LEGO Avengers. Now, number 13 and number 12, I really couldn't decide which way around to put these, so I'm going to put them together and that is Detroit Steel and Iron Monger. Now, being a massive fan of Iron Man 1 and I believe that is one of the best MCU movies, I love Iron Monger to bits in this game and his laser kind of works like a semi-automatic and it does fire like one but it does destroy golden objects and it's amazing to listen to. Both of the characters have the ability of flight which is rather 
have a rare for a big character and there's only minor changes between these two characters. For example, Ironmonger's special ability, he bangs his knuckles together which sends out a shockwave and then Detroit Steel revs up his chainsaw which sends out a spark. Their lasers also have different animations, I'll put a comparison up for you. In all honesty, I really can't decide which one I prefer. I prefer Detroit Steel for his abilities, but I prefer Ironmonger for his overall aesthetics. The main reason why these characters are so high on the list is I love flying around New York City as both of these characters because there's very limited big characters with the ability of flight and the laser animation is so unique, it really makes these two characters stand out. Then there's the chainsaw on Detroit Steel, which which is groovy. But none of this matters anymore because next up at number 11 is a Hulkbuster. There is actually a few variations of the Hulkbuster in LEGO Marvel Avengers. You've got Stan Lee's Hulkbuster with the gigantic pencil, Squirrel Girl's Hulkbuster which sends out giant acorns. They really went to utilise the actual weapons on the Hulkbuster. For example, when you're fighting enemies up close, you actually spin yourself around and use the laser to go all the way around you and you actually fire up close. I really love how they utilise this. The moveset is the exact same across all the Hulk Busters, the only thing that changes is what gets fired out. For example, Squirrel Girl, she fires out acorns, then Iron Man does repulsor blasts. They look incredible flying around New York City, and I love Stan Lee's big pencil. Do not let John Wick get hold of that pencil. Oh my. The Hulk Buster definitely is unique and it really does differentiate itself to all of the others on the list because it is purely built out of Lego and it is just a suit at the end of the day and I really like how different it is. And making its way just into the top 10 is Captain Clown from Lego DC Super Villains. Hiya Georgie. Now 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 do not worry this guy is not going to steal your paper boat. Instead he's just going to stare you down with that very creepy smile. Though they only use the standard big character model for Captain Clown, they really made him feel like an animatronic in the ways they went to animate his movements alongside all of the sound effects placed on top. Making it feel like you're not just playing some big guy dressed as a clown, you're actually playing a robotic clown which Joker made. And yes, this character is a part of the Batman animated series DLC and oh that DLC is too good, too good. I mean look at Batman with his blue cape. Beautiful. Funnily enough, Captain Clown may be one of the most powerful characters in the game. He's got a move where he swings a chain all the way around his body, and I'm not even lying, it just decimates everything. And then once you've destroyed them all, you can just wave at them. For me, he is easily a top 10 big character in the ways they went to portray him being a robotic clown via the animations, along with all the sound effects used, along with his little ominous smile. Easily a top 10. Time to jump from Gotham City all the way up to Apocalypse in Lego. DC supervillains again, with number 9 being Steppenwolf. Born to be wild. Not the band, the character. This time he is not here just looking for the anti-life equation, he's actually a really well-rounded character on his own. He can literally cook chicken on top of his axe, though it be a little bit dry. It's a really nice idle animation that I didn't realise were in the game. Now, Steppenwolf is one of the only few big characters in a LEGO game who actually has the ability to evade out of an attack. Though it is a little bit pointless because the character is that big, you don't really travel that much of a distance, so you don't really dodge out of anything, you just end up getting hit most of the time, unlike Aquaman's dodge. Upon first glance of the character of Steppenwolf, the main highlight is literally his weapon, which is this gigantic axe, and most big characters in LEGO games tend to not have a weapon, so it really makes him stand out. You even go to feel the weight of his weapon when he's attacking enemies, he slams his axe into the floor, breaking it. Then he goes to throw his axe, which yes does hit targets, but he thinks he's Captain Boomerang. Look at the size of that thing anyway, jeez. He also comes equipped with, yes, your standard LEGO game laser, which can destroy your golden objects. I also go to love how they decided to use the comic version of Steppenwolf instead of the Justice League version from 2017. Mind you, it was a massive improvement in Zack Snyder's Justice League to see Steppenwolf in his full potential. He were really good in that film, actually. As they go to say, the hardest choices require the strongest wills. At number 8, it definitely will put a smile on your face, and that is Thanos. Oh well, looks like reality can't be whatever you want it to be. You're not at number 1, are you? This character was very highly anticipated for LEGO Marvel Super Heroes 2, and he's part of the Infinity War DLC, and he did not disappoint. Some part of me really wishes they decided to use his appearance from Infinity War without the helmet on, but it doesn't really matter. The character, in all honesty, is inevitable because you really want to play him because he has the Infinity Gauntlet and that is so fun to use. And I know he doesn't consider fun when balancing the universe, but he 
it's, it's good fun. His standout ability for me is his slam attack, where he uses all the infinity stones and it circles around him and he slams into the floor. It just looks so incredible. And I love how you can actually use all of the infinity stones, such as you can use the time stone to obviously do the time stone puzzles. You cannot, however, use all of the infinity stones separately, but I love how they went to adapt them into his moveset. For example, his standard attack is the power stone when he fires out a little beam, and then his laser again is the power stone. Then his dodge attack is the space stone. The character is really creatively done. I love how when he flies around, he uses his chair, and he also uses his chair when he's attacking enemies in one of his combos. From the exact same character roster of LEGO Marvel Super Heroes 2, up next at number 7, just above Thanos, is Man-Thing. Now, whoa, 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 hold the line, hold the line. I, I like Man-Thing, but he is a really good big character. For starters, the design of Man-Thing is really intricate, and I just love the design of him. He is kind of like the Shrek of Marvel, you know, just telling people to get out of your swamp, and I love him in the swamp especially. He's, he's in his hometown, how can you not? The character, when fighting enemies, does exactly what you pictures Man-Thing to do. He uses roots from his arms to attack enemies at a distance, and I love his slam attack alongside his special ability. So his special ability, what he does is shoves his hand into the floor, which creates roots underneath the enemies, which encapsulates them and just tears them apart. And this is one of the most overpowered abilities in a LEGO game. Not to forget how menacing he looks when doing the special ability. I really do love Man-Thing, and he, he needs a bit more light in Marvel. He's a cool character. Swinging its way into number six is actually a character specifically designed for LEGO Marvel 2, and this was his first appearance in Marvel, and that is... Or is it Carnum? Yeah, it's Carnum. First off, the character definitely deserves this position for being, well, a brand new character created by TT Games. I know he's nothing brand, brand new. It's just Venom and Carnage put together. At least he's not called Venage. They definitely nailed the appearance of the character, and I'm also going to put Venom on this position too. In terms of what I especially love about these two characters is just how they swing around the city in LEGO Marvel Super Heroes 2. They've got a really awesome swinging animation where sometimes they turn and face the camera, and I love it when they do their little somersaults to say they're a big character. You can even scale up buildings as both of these characters, and they kind of climb up it like King Kong with the Empire State Building, but it's definitely a cool animation to say you don't really tend to do this much. There is only minor differences between Venom and Carnum, but they're pretty much the same. They use their symbiote to create stuff when attacking. For example, Carnum rips open his chest and load of tentacles come out. He also forms an axe with his hand when he slams, whereas Venom does a front flip and just plummets into the ground. However, Venom does have his amazing transformation. Just look how epic this looks. And Carnum, unfortunately, does not have a transformation. It would have been really awesome to see him transform back into Venom and Carnage, but unfortunately, we didn't get that. Next up is the guy who wants his anti-life equation, and that's number five being Darkseid. This one definitely was inevitable because this character does not have your average LEGO game laser. He actually has proper working Omega beams. They work in a very similar fashion to a laser, but wherever you point your reticle, the Omega beams travel through it and it just looks wicked and you can create patterns in the sky and this ability definitely deserves him this spot. Then the character has his own teleportation alongside he can bash enemies' face is in with a meteor, yes. You heard me. Even to the minute details of him juggling his henchmen around when you do the idol animation, Darkseid is easily a top five big character. To the likes of his Omega beams, to just his animations to when he's fighting, and he's a lot better compared to Lego Batman 3's Darkseid. What even is this? Why is he so stiff and why does he attack like that? weird. And talking about Lego Batman 3, just making his way outside of the top 3 is Atrocitus. He definitely is a unique character and we need more characters with special abilities like Atrocitus because this really makes him stand out. Just in case you, um, you do not know what these are, he can send out a massive bull from his red lantern ring which just propels itself forward and you can use this as much as you want and then his slam attack, he literally rodeo rides the bull. Not to forget how amazing he is when he gets shrunk when you are tiny atrocities, you can spam the abilities as much as you want, they're that fast. Oh my, just look at him go, look how rapid he is. Overall, such a superb character through every single aspect. He can fly around, he's got really awesome special abilities, and he just looks incredible. And making his way onto the number three spot is the legendary Thing Fang. Now, I can reassure you, if you have played any LEGO Marvel game after LEGO Marvel Super Heroes 1, you know who Fing Fang Foom is. Basically, 
He's the big guy. Especially when you put on big head mode. I mean, look how stupid this looks. This is the biggest Lego game character, by the way. So this dragon-looking giraffe thing is really amazing, to be honest. He can transform himself to be absolutely huge. And yes, you can fly around in both Lego Avengers and Lego Marvel 2. There isn't really all too much to say about Fing Fang Foom. He's the biggest Lego game character to date when he transforms into his big version. And he just looks incredible marching around New York City, picking up cars and throwing them around is definitely worth your top three. And just before we move on to the next position, I need to tell you about something that I found, and that is a Lego lightsaber. I mean, look at this. Oh. This Lego lightsaber is created by Owner Saber, and I just had to partner with them to obviously let you guys know about a Lego lightsaber in real life. I mean, come on. You can even change the colour of the lightsaber, and it's just such an incredible product, and the lightsaber really has a lot of weight behind it, and you can really feel the quality of the saber, but it's not too heavy, which is a great thing. Thing. And if you are thinking about picking up a Lego lightsaber, you can use my code to get a discount. And if you want to check out any of the other sabers Owner Saber has to offer, check out the link in the description. Now, making his way into number two on the list is Fing Fang Foom of the Lego DC games, and that is Anti Monitor. And in all honesty, he kind of beats Fing Fang Foom. Now, I am a huge fan on how they did his particle effect around his fists, which are a lot better than the flame particles on Surtur, because they just get in the way. However, in this instance, they do not, and they look really wicked. And feast your eyes upon how massive this character can become. Now, 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 yes, he ain't as big as Fing Fang Foom, but it is better than Fing Fang Foom. For starters, I'm a huge fan on the design of him, and he just looks really awesome at night time, especially in Gotham City, and I love the sound of his energy blasts. Alongside his standard Lego game laser, but it's a little bit more than your standard Lego game laser because I really love the purple colour scheme and it sounds amazing and it instantly destroys stuff. On top of all of this, yes, Anti-Monitor can fly even when he is massive and I don't know if it looks a little bit silly, but he can fly. For me, he kind of flies around like Buzz Lightyear, but I also love picking up cars as this character just throwing them into the water when he's massive. It's just something I love doing. Both Anti-Monitor and Fing Fang Foom could go anywhere around, really. It all is up to personal preference. For me, it has to be Anti-Monitor. I really love the particle effects, especially at night time when you're super jumping around. And now it's time to move on to number one. Now, for number one, I have to say, it's alive, it's alive, it's Frankenstein. Now, I know what you're thinking. How can this character be the number one best big character? Well, he is. And this character is from LEGO DC Supervillains, and I have no affinity for this character at all, and I don't even know who he is from the DC comics. He's not Frankenstein as we know and love him. It's this version of him. And oh my, he is awesome. He obviously goes to resemble the Frankenstein we all know and love, but I really love this interpretation upon the character. I mean, the original book of Frankenstein dates all the way back to 1818. Now, this version of Frankenstein is heavily inspired by Mary Shelley's version of Frankenstein from obviously 1880. This character's moveset is so astonishingly different to all other big characters on this list, even to the likes of your average Lego game characters. The only way I can really portray this to you is just to show you how impeccable this character is when fighting. For starters, his sword obviously channels electricity because he's Frankenstein, and alongside using his sword, whilst attacking enemies, he also jumps in the air to shoot them, and it is just so fluid when you're fighting enemies, this happens all of a sudden and it just feels awesome. The gun that he's using, though it doesn't look like a classic revolver, it kind of feels like a classic revolver when you're firing it, and I love the sound of it. Even to the likes of you watching the gameplay of Frankenstein, you can see this character is exceedingly well designed. This being to the likes of every single aspect for this character, such as when he slams his sword into the ground, channeling electricity. They really did bring this character to life. <laughs> Anyway, thank you all so much for watching today's video, and if you did go to enjoy this, feel free to drop a like and go to subscribe, and if you want to check out any of my other LEGO game videos, there'll be a link at the end alongside a playlist. Anyway, hope you all have a fantastic week, and I'll see you in a bit. Adios.